Well, so hey guys and welcome to the spotlight. Well, so a lot of people confuse the rocket nozzle with well the whole thing. And this video is about why is their shape the way it is. So I'll start with their converging and diverging design. For a rocket, we want its exhaust gas leaving the nozzle as fast as possible. Since you know, Newton's third law of motion. Now I'm going to be breaking this down in the simplest terms possible for everyone to understand. Okay, so let's focus first on the converging part. There is a very simple analogy to it. Have you ever tried squeezing the end of a water pipe and seen that the velocity of water increases drastically? Well, the explanation for this is very simple. Flow rate of the pipe is fixed. So that means that a fixed amount of water needs to leave the pipe in a given time interval. Well, so we know that a fixed volume of water needs to leave the water hose. So if we limit the area of cross section of the pipe, we can increase the length of the column that leaves the water pipe in a given second. So that would increase the velocity of the pipe. This explanation might make it a bit easier to understand. These rectangles represent water columns of equal volumes. I've made sure they have equal areas. And since your screen is 2D, consider they have equal depths. Now the flow rate of water is constant, which means that equal number of these boxes need to pass out of the pipe in equal time intervals to represent that equal volumes of water flow in a second. Now as is clearly visible, by reducing the area of cross section, a larger length goes out, meaning a larger velocity. Well, so the same happens with rockets. You decrease the size of the nozzle and the velocity of the gas increases. But using that logic, we should convert the nozzle to an infinite amount and the velocity should increase. Well, for one, after a point, the nozzle gets choked. Since we hit a sweet spot where our equipment can handle only so much pressure and there's only so much space for the gas to pass through. Well, for another, after breaking the sound barrier, the rules change. They get reversed actually. Yeah. Now, as you diverse the nozzle, the velocity of gas increases. So we come to the second part. How much do we increase the size of the nozzle? Well, for this, we need to focus on its efficiency. We need to maximize the efficiency of the rocket nozzle. Besides wanting that the gas leaving the nozzle is the fastest, we also need that it is in the right direction, which means it should be in the opposite direction of the motion of the rocket. So for that, we need to match the pressure of the nozzle with the ambient pressure. Imagine gas coming out of the nozzle and due to the random motion, they are applying a pressure on the walls of the nozzle and they continue to do so when they come out of the nozzle. Now, if there was no force due to atmospheric pressure on the gas, the gas would expand out, thus wasting a lot of energy because a lot of it is going in the sideward direction. Now, our target is that the force due to the atmospheric pressure and the sideward force of the exhaust gas should be equal. In short, the pressure in the nozzle and the ambient pressure should be equal. Now, how do we do it? We just keep diverging the nozzle. And in the process of diverging the nozzle, we are actually decreasing the pressure. And we keep diverging it and decreasing the pressure till the pressure in the nozzle becomes equal to the ambient pressure. You can clearly see this in the MVAC, the Merlin vacuum engines and the Merlin sea level engines. The nozzle pressures for the MVAC engines or the Merlin vacuum engines need to be reduced way more, way more to match the ambient pressures in the vacuum of space. And that's why that huge bell gong humongous looking nozzle thing. Well, so if you learned something new, thank you for taking the initiative. I hope you make good use of it. Yeah. Or even otherwise, learning something new does not eat you. It always helps. Although I don't know when.